Hey people, Sylvius here. Uh, I'm actually reversing things a little bit. Um, one of my most viewed videos was my how to make cash video, and I did that kind of like haphazardly. So here I am as a gold coin, and I'm going to do a better version of that video. Uh, so again, though, it is kind of the same thing. Anybody who was able to fully grasp everything in that video won't find a lot new here, but I'm going to do it in a little bit better of a formation and whatnot. So to work with that, I have here a nice little spreadsheet. Mine, ignore that thing that popped up for a second. Uh, so I broke this down into Rashid Yasir, the blue and the green gins, and then also Rafzan, Melfar, and Grizzly Atlas. So we're going to start here with Rashid. I went through on both my Olympa character... Let me copy this over. Ah, I'm not even going to be able to do it. Uh, I went over on both my Olympa character, Dal Dal my knight, and my... I'm sorry. Silvius, my paladin, and my Amara character, Dal Dal my knight. Uh, and I price-checked the items that seem to be the best choices. So, for example, you know, I price-checked the Amber Staff here, and I price-checked the Beast Slayer Axe here, and, you know, you can kind of see the items down here. Um, here is... And I didn't copy it over on this one for some reason. Uh, this is the base price of the item. So your Amber Staff's worth 8k, Beast Slayer Axe is worth 105 or 1,500, your Crocodile Boots are 1,000, and so on. Uh, and then this is the price that I would have, <clears throat> and I may have even done, I put on... Is that... Okay, interesting. Uh, I may have priced the items here uh, at this actual price and placed a bid on them. So like the Amber Staff, I'm going to swap over to Dow Dow. Uh, I've created some new characters since the last time I played. Bam. So, Amber Staff. Now, I'm sh not sure exactly why I put it for red here. Don't know, honestly. Don't know. Anyway, all these Rashid items, you have to do the Traveling Trader quest to be able to sell to in the first place. Uh, so that does complicate things. Uh, I'm not sure why I marked that one as red. Same with the Beast Slayer Axe, but I'll double check the Beast Slayer Axe, too. Beast Slayer Axe. Who knows? Who knows? You know? I'm not sure why I did it. Oh, actually, I can, at least I can point it out with the Beast Slayer Axe here. The Beast Slayer Axe, you see that there's a whole bunch of offers here for multiples of uh, at the actual price. So that means, at least to some extent, these items are moving on the market. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the situation with the uh, Amber Staff, but we can run underneath this option. Also, like, here, take a look. Uh, I marked this one as red, so it's something you can see. The Glacier Robe sells to Rashid for 11 k Glacier, Robe. Yeah, and we've got sell offers that aren't red, so that means this is a reasonable sell offer running from 40000 to to 100000 and then no buy offers. Um, it's worth noting that when you're checking, like, Rashid's prices and things like that, <coughs> that not all of them are actually, like, reasonable prices, okay? Uh, some of these items, and this will affect also over into the gins and whatnot, but uh, items that are actually used by people will generally be more expensive. You're not going to profit off of Boots of Haste, for instance, because people use Boots of Haste. You're not going to profit off of Steel Boots because people use Steel Boots. Um, so these Lightning Headbands, the Magma ones, the Terra Boots, and the Glacier items, they're kind of a hit and a miss depending on what your world is popular with and what is hunting. And there's a discrepancy between uh, non-PVP and PVP worlds. Uh, Non-PVP worlds will have people hunting more monsters at various places that they might not on uh, PVP ones and vice versa. Uh, you'll also note that non-PVP worlds are going to have a whole lot more bots. And bots are traditionally going to bot in places that aren't prime spots because they'll get in people's way and it'll cause problems and they're more likely to get banned. Uh, so you're more likely to see, like, a level 150 bot botting in, like, the Nibel or Ice Cave or something, killing crystal spiders, when it should only be hunting there when it's, like, level 70. Uh, so that that also throws things out of a little bit a uh, little bit of whack. That's why, for instance, like, more of the Glacier items are being sold on Olympa, uh, I think because they're more easily bought. Uh, generally speaking, though, you'll see that most of these prices are better on Amara, and more things are sold at lower prices on Amara. Uh, and I'm not 100% certain what the reason for that is. Um, I don't know if I want to generalize that and say it's because Amara is non-PVP or Amara just has a lower player base or anything like that. Um, 
So it, it's kind of hard to say. I'm not sure exactly why that is, and I'm only my sample size here for research purposes is only Olympa numera. So if anybody wants to double check on like I don't know Silvera, Calmera, Mortera, or something like that, feel free. Uh, and I'm interested in what anybody has to say on that topic. Anyway, though. So these are the items that go to Rashid that seemed all mostly reasonable. You can see some like good ones here. Um, Rashid is really good to buy for because he's very close to the depot. He's in all the different towns, so it's not really a hassle to get to him. Uh, particularly of note, and I'm not there anymore, which is a shame. Uh, when he's in Carlin, you can actually get him close enough to the one depot spot on the second floor that you can stay at your depot and continue to talk to him. Um, which is great if you're selling a huge amount of stuff to him. You gotta see what I've actually already purchased and what I've had mailed to me already. See, I just put these offers up uh, just recently and already... Now, I think I probably had some of these Minotaur uh, trophies, but I already got these Platinum Amulets, Glacier Mask, Lightning Headband, Wyvern Fang... I think that's a Wyvern Fang, right? Yeah, Wyvern Fang. Terra Amulets, and then some more uh, Minotaur trophies. So I'll take those items to Rashid. Uh, for Rashid... Because he's in Carlin on Sundays, a premium player can sell to him if you've already done the quest. Now, the quest requires you to be premium. So if you can just wing one month worth of premium and get Rashid, you're golden. At least on Sundays. Uh, I'm also going to throw this offer out here, too. Um, if anybody wants and isn't a premium character, I could make a character on that server. And as long as you give me the money to do the Rashid quest... I will buy and sell, well, I'll sell stuff to Rashid for you. Uh, <clears throat> but you gotta pay me the money to do the quest. So that means you gotta give me the deer trophy, and I don't know, the the fish, the goldfish bowl, and you gotta give me some money for like traveling fees and stuff like that. But I'll get myself to level 20 or something so that I can do the quests without dying when I'm running through Port Hope and whatnot. But you gotta fund me, and then you gotta give me the items and probably contact me on Olympa or uh, Amera and tell me when you want me to set. Also at the same time, and I don't have to do quests for this, but if anybody wants me to place offers on their world, on the, like, the market, because only premium players can place markets on the, uh, place offers on the market, I will make a character and get to level 8 <coughs> on your world, if you so wish, and I will place, um, offers for you. You just gotta contact me and tell me you want me to do that. I understand, though, the whole thing, like, both of these require you to trust me a little bit, because you're going to be dumping expensive equipment and I can just take it and run. But if I'm making a level 8 character just on your world to do this, there's not a lot of risk I'm going to take it, and you're just going to have to trust me. Anyway, I will not, however, do the uh, the Jin quest, because I have to get myself to level 40 for that, and I don't care enough to do that. Uh, but pretty much anything else here I can sell to you. Or I can sell for you. So this is Rashid. Next we have Yasir. Yasir buys all the creature products that are purchased by pretty much other people. Um... I only put notable things here that nobody else sells, or in the case of the Behemoth Claw, uh, something that other people sell, but I just wanted to note it. The Behemoth Claw, because it sells for 2k, and I found it on both worlds for around 1,700. Uh, the Bat Decoration uh, is only dropped by two boss monsters, and it's also a daily spawn in the Pits of Inferno in, I think, Infernatil's Throne Room. So you can only get one a day, unless those boss monsters are killed. Uh, but I did see non-red sell offer, or yeah, non-red buy offers for lower than this, and I saw, like, legitimate sell offers. The Cat's Paw uh, can only be sold to uh, Yasir, and same with the Skeleton Decoration. Uh, and I have on Dow Dow, I think. Yeah, you see she's got multiple Cat's Paws here. So I was actually able to buy those at that half price rate, uh, but you want to be a little careful with the year seer things, because if you sink in too much of your money, and you're sitting on, like, I don't know, 5,000 cat paws or something, and your seer doesn't show up on your server for six weeks, you could be stuck and out of money. Uh, everybody else, it can be a hassle, but you can at least go reset. <clears throat> so that's your seer. Uh, next is Tamaril, and Tamaril is in, uh, was actually why I'm over here in uh, Yalhar in the first place, so I can get to him. He is in the Magician's Quarter. All the way up here. He is a dragon lord, so he looks like a dragon lord. He's not an actual monster, though. Don't fear him. He is, I think, the Sorcerer's Guild, like, spellcaster dude. He sells you the spells. He buys gems. 
Uh, blue gems at 5k, I could get them on a mare at 2,600. Green gems, 5k, I could get them on a mare at 3,400. Red gems, yellow gems, 700, 650, uh, and even violet gems. Uh, the violet gems that I want to mention, <coughs> they're rarer than all of the other types, so usually when people are offering to sell them, they're offering to sell them at around like 30k, whereas all the others are usually sold at around their price. I believe... The green gems, I think, or no, it's the blue gems, are a little bit rarer usually than the green gems, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, also, for, I mean, this doesn't help because you have to be in Yalahar, but these gems, not the violets, but the yellows and the reds mostly, and sometimes the greens, are often actually just have sell orders at lower than their NPC price. So even without premium, you could buy them. In fact, if I check here, let's check. Whoops. I clicked completely on the wrong one. Gem. <clears throat> so blue gem at 5,000. Green gem at 4,929. So, I mean, 70 profit rate there. Except you can buy 17 of them, and then you just run them over there. Red gems, 955. Violet gems, 3,000. Yellow gems, 983. Now, um, worth mentioning here is that I've already purchased and walked over and sold, today before I did this video, about 300 gems. And then I just wanted to leave some here. So I had actually already purchased the best deals. There were actually yellow gems at around like 850, and there were reds at around like just flat 800. Uh, so you could conceivably, if you knew a premium friend, you could buy them yourself and uh, like mail them to him or hand him them off to him, and he could... Uh, he could sell them for you, and you don't have to, do, uh, at least you don't have to fiddle with putting your own offers up. As you can see here, though, I mean, you've got some good options. Uh, sorry, that's this page. We're going to go on to page two here. This is blue gins, green gins. Uh, Horon is like the magic guy. I think he sells and buys amulets and also wands. The only things that I found worthwhile is most of the times amulets and rings are sold for much higher than he actually buys them for because those things are useful. Uh, and then for the ones that nobody actually uses, most people don't even bother trying to sell. So, like, you're not going to see a lot of, like, silver amulets on the market, for instance, or bronze amulets, because nobody really uses them. Um, he will buy them with one charge or one second left on them. So, like, if you were going to use life rings and you wanted to be really frugal, you could watch, like, pay attention to how much time is left on them. Uh, by the way, it's this guy that buys the rings, though. But anyway, you could use the ring up until there's one or two seconds left on it, and then just take it off and sell him for the full price of, like, I think, life rings are 50, maybe? Anyway, I found Wands of Cosmic Energy and Wands of Draconia are good options. Sometimes Wands of Inferno are an option, because they're looted very often on dragons, but today, I didn't find any of them. And then actual items here, I had Angelic Axes. I also want to point out that on this page, I did things a slightly different with this ring. Anything here that has a red mark on it means I saw buy offers, or sell offers, I'm sorry, somebody offering to sell me one for less than the actual price. So if I go here, Wand of Cosmic Energy, I can buy, I can buy three of them for 200 gold less than they're actually worth. This guy is selling one for 100 gold less, and this guy is selling 154 of them for 100 gold less. So that's that's 15.4k I could make just by buying all of those if I was sitting on 300,000 gold, and I also had the uh, the blue gin quest. Uh, so that's why these ones are red. Uh, so on to the actual like equipment, we have angelic axes, crown armors were actually sold at reduced rates, crown helmets, <clears throat> crown shields, dragon shields were surprisingly cheap, um, fire axes, fire swords, glorious axes, guardian shields. Uh, spike swords, war hammers, uh, and then we go to the green gins. Now I want to comment one thing here too. If you have two characters, or you're planning on having two characters in the future, uh, consider using whoever has the most carrying capacity and who you think will have the most carrying capacity to get the green gins. The green gins buy more things like knight armor, uh, serpent swords, and tower shields, and like warrior helmets. Things that you're going to loot a lot of at like around the level 100 mark. So you're going to be taking a whole lot more stuff to the green gins than you are going to be the blues. I mean, if you look at the items here on blues, we've got, what, like, 
<clears throat> guardian shields that are dropped by, what, I think, like, liches and demon skeletons. They're not hunted all that often, and it's a rare drop. Fire swords are dragon lords. Dragon shields, I suppose, are dragons. But, like, you've got crown equipment here, and that's not coming until you're going to be, like, routinely hunting, uh, like, heroes or something like that. On the other hand, we have knight armor and knight legs, which are dropped by crystal spiders, uh, the tarantula boss, a whole bunch of other things. Dragon hammers are dropping from regular um, dragons. Ancient shields and black shields are coming from ghosts and mummies, respectively. Serpent swords are from dragons. I mean, you got a lot of options here. Uh, also worth mentioning is, to get to the blue Jin place, <clears throat> it's closer to Darashia, so it's less of a walk. I'm pretty sure it's faster to get to there. But all you really run into on the way is some nomads, some skeleton, like, honor guards, I think they're called, and maybe a single stone golem that you can easily run past. On the other hand, I'm sorry, this is that was for the blue ones. To get to the green gins, you have to go past a whole bunch of scorpions and a whole bunch of, like, hyenas, and it's much more of a hassle. I made the mistake of having my paladin hit the blue ones, and then my level, my exactly level 40 sorcerer hit the green ones. So she's constantly running with her almost no capacity, carrying tons of tower shields and dragon hammers, some of the heaviest crap you can get. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's a hassle. Anyway, so yeah, I would get a knight and have my knight do... Dow Dow's gonna do the green gins, for instance. Anyway, though. So Yaman here sells and buys rods. Hailstorm rods were actually reduced price on Olympa, but not good price on Amera, which I found surprising. But then all the other ones were better on Amera, and then the Spring Sprouts uh, were both sold for less than their actual NPC price. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the Jin quest is actually kind of, like, tough to do. Unlike the other ones, where it's just kind of like spending the money and spending the time. So you do need to be, like, a certain level or have some teammates. Although it's not nearly as bad as it used to be, where like the Jin quest required like a legitimate team of people to do. But anyway, so these are the Jin items that are the most optional ones. Uh, worth mentioning, just real quick. The skull staff was absurdly inexpensive on Amara. You're looking at 1.2k profit on each skull staff. But uh, same with like the Titan Axe here too. Worth mentioning is that the the market sees a whole bunch of tower shields, a whole bunch of serpent swords, and a whole bunch of knight armor. To the point where, at one point, I purchased all the Serpent Swords that I could get off the market, and then ended up with, like, around 1.8k Serpent Swords. Which literally took me, like, six hours to sell it. <laughs> um, so, okay, that's that. And then finally we have Rathzan, who's in Venor. He buys the, the rat people stuff, I think they're Cormier or something like that. Uh, leather harnesses, life preservers, rat ratanas... Spike shields, spiky clubs. I highlighted this one to point out that people actually use Rotanas. It is a good level 25 sword. Uh, and it's like almost as good as the level 30 sword. And significantly better than the level 20 sword. So, people do use the Rotanas, Which kind of, uh... Has people like actually buying them to use. But anyway. Mostly the leather harness was a good deal. The life preservers and the spiky shield and the spike clubs because they're not they're not as expensive. You have less profit margins on them. Uh, Amera didn't really have good deals on the Rotana or on the Spike Club. And uh, I'll get to that in a second. Melfar, he buys Minotaur items. That's your Minotaur horns, your piece of a warrior helmet, your broken crossbow, and your purple rope. Uh, I believe that's all that he buys. The broken crossbow is only 30 gold and isn't really worth your time. And the piece of broken armor is only dropped by Minotaur Warriors and also kind of isn't worth your time. It only sells for 50. The important ones are the horns and the robes. The horns sometimes drop two per Minotaur. In fact, I think they do that pretty often. And they're they're also dropped by all the higher Minotaurs that you run into on Oromon. The, like, uh, worm, or the war, worm priestesses, the hunters, and the, like, Muta guys. And the purple robes are also dropped by the Warren Priestesses. Uh, so, and in addition to Minotaur Mages. So yeah, you get some decent profit on those. <clears throat> Slightly less on Olympa. But the nice thing about these items, and a few other items, unlike most of the Jin stuff, which are like heavy weapons, you know, like a Dragon Hammer I think is like 97 ounces, Knight Armor is 120. Most of these things are like weapons or armor. There's a few, like, um... 
No, actually, yeah. Everything here doesn't stack. Yeah. None of these things will stack in your inventory. Most of them are heavy. These things are actually relatively light, and these things are relatively light. Actually, super light on those. Uh, but nothing will stack. These things stack, so even though I'm only looking to make like around 20 gold profit here and 15 gold profit here, uh, I can sell like 600 purple robes just in one go. So even though I'm not making a whole bunch of money, uh, it does add up, you know, and that 600 purple robes actually translates to around, you know, what is it, like, if I'm making 15 gold on each one, eh, you know, it's whatever. It adds up. Uh, and then finally we have Grizzly Adams. Grizzly Adams buys a whole bunch of creature products, and I'm going to hit on creature products too in a second. But um, I'm just focusing on the trophies here. The Cyclops trophies were incredibly inexpensive on both worlds. The Dragon Lord trophies were cheaper on Olympa, and there's actually people selling Dragon Lord trophies for less than their sell price. Lion trophies were about this price, but I don't know how often lion trophies are actually hunted. Uh, lizard trophies, same deal. Now, I've hunted in the Muggy Plains for a long time and never got a lizard trophy, so I don't know. Uh, Minotaur trophies are the good one. A lot of them drop. And then you get wolf trophies, and I don't know how often those are dropped, but you have good profit margins on them if they do. Now, the two things I want to say here are creature products are going to vary world to world, and they're also going to vary, like, week to week. Um, when I first was on Olympa, I found I could make really good money on Vampire Teeth. They sell for 275 in Olympa, and I was frequently finding people offering to sell them on the market for uh, approximately, like, I want to say, like, 250 uh, Dragon's Tails I would routinely get without even having to put my own offer up. And also, Green Mushrooms were a good one. And then there was a couple of other things that I picked up every now and then. But they're going to zoom back and forth uh, and are, they kind of tie into my second point, which is botters, people who are going to bot, are your friends. Um, botters are going to hunt in an area. Huh. I don't know why I have, uh, somebody gave me a whole bunch of healing potions. But that's cool. Hey, I don't know who that was, but thanks, dude. Um, anyway, botters are going to hunt in a place for an incredibly long period of time and then just dump all of their stuff on the market because they don't want to take care of it because they're a bot. You know, it doesn't matter to them. Uh, which is why things like Cyclops trophies and all of the Minotaur products you're going to see so much of because Cyclopses are botted all the time. Mount Sternum is a botter's paradise. Uh, Orman is also a botter's paradise. Same with the, the Rat People products, it's a like botter's paradise. Um, so occasionally you're going to have a botter who's been botting for like six weeks on the Muggy Plains or something like that, and then he's just going to dump all of his like lizard products. Now lizard products aren't terribly good because you need to turn in uh, Tombs of Knowledge, I think, to like sell stuff. But he's going to just dump like 6,000 of each of the items or something onto the market, and you stand to make a decent profit, because he's going to put them at a reduced rate just to sell them and get them moving. So that's where the Minotaur items are coming from. That's where most of the trophies are coming from. Uh, and you're going to see, like, a bajillion serpent spawns, because, uh, serpent swords, I'm sorry, because people bought those relentlessly. Likewise with the Night Armor and the Night Lights. Other things you're not going to see so much of, because they come from monsters that aren't often bought them. The gems are a good example. You're going to see a whole bunch of gems because people bought the gems. So botters are your friend. Creature products are going to vary almost on a, like a daily basis. So anything that you happen to just like double check. Um, and I suggest, this is like a personal opinion, is that when you are going to sell your creature products that you looted yourself, double check them on the market. Because if you've only got like six of them and you have to drop a boat to Yalahar to sell them, you're not going to really make a profit on them in the first place because you're going to waste so much money on the boat. And if they sell in Yalahar for 275 but somebody's on the market's willing to buy them for 250 you might just be better off selling them to the guy for 250 uh, More importantly, though, certain items are used in quests. A good example, of, I believe, is bear paws. Uh, let me check that, actually. Bear paws. Yeah, see, now bear paws are have a buy offer at 2,000 and a sell offer at 3,800, 
whereas like polar bear ball balls aren't used for anything, and here they are. Though. Anyway, uh, another one is Behold Bone Lord Eyes, because they're not Beholders anymore. Uh, yeah, they're selling for four thousand, so like they're used for quests. So you do before you sell them to an NPC, you want to double check because all right. You could sell this as a red offer for 4007 Yeah, I'm incognito so that you can't see any of my important stuff. Um, Bone Lord. I. So an NPC will buy your Bone Lord I at 80 GP. So always check before you, um, you actually sell. And while you're doing that, if you see anything that like you can buy for uh, lower than the NPC will buy it, Pick that item up, and then kind of keep checking on it, because whoever was selling it at that right might keep selling it. So anyway, that's the whole thing here. This is like a better version of that video. I hope it worked better. Uh, and again, I want to reiterate my offer. If anybody needs me to place offers for them, as long as they funnel the money into me uh, to get like the get Rashid quest done, I'll do that for them, or they just give me the money and I'll place the offers. Um, and then I'll send them the items, or I'll sell them the items myself if they need me to. Uh, the only thing I want to point out is, is that when you're doing this, and this is the last little bit of things, there's always a fee of 200 gold. I'm sorry, 20 gold. And it increases beyond a certain point. It's like a percentage of the total, I think. Uh, you know, let me check. Bye. Okay. So yeah, it's always what? It looks like 10%? No. 1%? No. Dude, I used to be good at math. I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, I'm so stupid. Yeah, it looks like it's 1%. Uh, I think. God, I don't even know. Really? No, oh, because I don't have the money. Anyway, though, it maxes out at, um, I think, 1,000. You do want to make sure that whatever item it is that you're trying to buy... Uh, that you're going to profit off of it after you consider the fee. So it's worth... This is actually a two-part thing. It's worth mentioning that, like, if you're going to buy these at, you know, 160 or something like that, uh, don't offer to buy, like, you know, 9,000 of them or something like that because you're going to pay a large fee. And if only, like, two people sell to you, you're going to have, you know, you're going to end up actually losing. Uh, and then also keep in mind whatever your travel fees are. And uh, I suggest when you first start doing this, only place an order for like five or six of any individual item. That way you can see how long it takes that item to come in. Because uh, if you put out like an item that doesn't have a lot of movement on the market, you might have your money tied up in the market for kind of like months. Or weeks at least. Uh, and you don't want to lose on your uh, whatever if you can avoid it. Also, I suggest when you put like an offer... Let me uh, do trophy because this is a good example. Alright, so when you're doing a, an offer, where is Minotaur Trophy? Here we go. This dude has got 419. When you put an offer down, you're going to put a better offer than him. He's going to come by and realize that you, like, one-upped him, and then one-up you by one gold. And you're going to see that all the time. I'm trying to think of an item that was uh, pretty popular. Hold on. Ah, the gems are probably a good example. See, like, right here, we've got a guy who went 514, 527, 530, 531, 532. And then finally, I think that's actually me with the 650 right there, just for the record. Uh, so yeah, you're going to see that um, if you only put, like, a small amount up, instead of, let's say, 200, you put, like, 25, you're, it's more likely that uh, somebody will sell... Ooh. Boom. Uh, it's more likely that somebody will sell you the 25 that you offered before the dude who you undercut realizes it and then undercuts you again. And if you get into like a pricing war where you keep canceling your orders, you're just going to keep losing the fees. So yeah, just be careful with that. Uh, don't try to lock up too much of your money. And otherwise, yeah. So if you need me to open up a character on your world, send me a message. You can either comment on my video, you can send me through the Facebook... Or you can, um, I don't know, actually make a character on Amara or Olympa and track me down. Uh, you know, tell me what you what world you need me to come to. I'll come to your world. I'll make a character there. And I'll get to level 8 if that's all that's necessary. And then I can do buy and all, uh, sell offers on the, the thing for you. And if that's no good and you need me to do Rashid, I can do Rashid for you. Uh, the last, last thing I want to mention is... 
You should still get premium at least for a week to get Rashid because you can sell to him on Sundays. Yasir can also show up in Carlin, but he only has a 1 in 3 chance of doing that, and he also only shows up maybe like once a week in the first place. So if you're relying on Yasir to show up in Carlin, you might only see him once a month. Tamaril is in Yalahar, so don't ignore him if you're not premium. The Jins are out of the question for you also. Also, nobody's going to really want to carry Jin stuff to you, for you, because that's like a huge hassle. Whereas, like, one of your buddies might take stuff to Tamaril for you, but don't rely on it for the Jins. Rafzan is in Fenor, Melfar is in Kazadrun, Grizzly Adams is in Port Hope. And all these uh, Grizzly Adam things also require you to have a certain rank in the Killing in the Name of Quest things for the Paul and Fur Society. So that's the final thing. If anybody needs help, I'll help you out as if possible. And I'll see you guys later. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe.